wow, there was a there was a trailer. It's a book, and there was a trailer, Patricia. There should be trailers for all books, don't you think? I understand, but I wasn't expecting that, and it totally put me in the mood. I see crime tape, and uh, my heart starts to race. I know. Hello. Hello. Hello, viewers, partners, 153 participants. My name is Jamie Lee Curtis. I am very happy to be here uh, on behalf of... Uh, well, not on behalf of HarperCollins, but at the invitation of HarperCollins to talk to my great friend um, about the new Scarpetta book after a long effing wait. And we will discuss the long effing wait immediately after I introduce her. I don't think I need to for anybody who's already here. I, all of the chat already is talking about people who've read everything you've ever written, the Scarpetta and beyond. And uh, it's thrilling for me to be here. Um, we met socially uh, and have become very close friends. Uh, our spouses are close friends. And, um, you know, when you get to know someone and you get to know their integrity and who they are and what they think and feel and the depth of their soul and their mind, it, it then makes you go, oh, duh. Well, no wonder the depth uh, of the writing is so powerful. And that's certainly been my case with Patricia Cornwell, who, as you all know, has sold, you know, 115, 120 million books, 120 countries, won every crime writing um, award that there is to win. And most importantly, really gave birth to the current spate of crime, of shows like CSI and those shows that we have become uh, uh, devoted to and have a huge fan base really owe it to the hot blonde sitting um, uh, here, uh, not here with me, but here with me virtually, Patricia Cornwell. Welcome. Hello. My friend. Hello to everybody out there. Thank you for joining us today. Yes, we're getting a lot of chatting. We have a lot of people want to know a lot of, she's like, where can I find a copy of Jack the Ripper? We'll discuss that later. Um, okay, why, <laughs> why did Scarpetta go away? And why did you decide to bring her back? Like what, what, we are so happy to have her back. I feel like she is ours. So wow. she, she took a long sabbatical, why? You know, when I finished Chaos, the 24th book, um, I just, I was kind of at my wits end, not knowing really what to do anymore with, with the series. And I was feeling overwhelmed by all the backstory. You know, you create all these stories along the way, and then you got to remind everybody of this, that, and the other. And it's almost like, I almost would say that in hindsight, I kind of feel like she fired me. And she said, you know what, go learn something else because you're really getting to be a drag. All you do is get me killed, shot, take people away that I care about. Um, and, and the serial killer then escapes and I have to catch him the next book. So literally speaking though, I decided that, you know, this was time to quit, quit while you're ahead. And I, I quit the series five years ago. I was never planning on coming back to it. In mm -hmm. fact, for a little while, I wasn't even thinking I'd write books anymore. And then I wanted to do the space thrillers. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear that those needed to be books. I was hoping eventually it would be TV. But long story short, had I not gone and do all, done all, started the new research, going back to Interpol, going back to Scotland Yard, uh, cruising around the White House to get the lay of the land, and most of all, doing the things with NASA and aerospace companies and artificial intelligence, trying to learn what's going on in the world right. today. And then the pandemic hit. And like everybody else, I found myself unplugged. I mean, I finished, you know, the, the second Captain Chase book spin came out last January, and then I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm locked down um, and I started really, really evaluating life and the future. And I thought if there's anybody that has something to say now in this world gone so amuck, it's our mm -hmm. friend Scarpetta. Mm -hmm. And that's who I would like to talk to right now. I'd like to walk into her garden and I saw it in an old place, old town Alexandria, Virginia, it kind of popped mm -hmm. into my head when I was thinking about this and I imagined 
I'd like to go in the garden there and sit down at the wrought iron table and talk to her and say, what the F are we going to do now? Well, you know, it's interesting because you've incorporated those very new technologies and new passions of yours that you, you know, for those, for those who are an uninitiated uh, Patricia Cornwell um, devotee, let's just say there's some people here who are not. I know there are many, many who are. Well, most of them are here because of you. Let's just start with that. And they're waiting for okay. when the Halloween stuff is going to start up. <laughs> yeah, because that's going to, yeah, because I'm going to talk about that here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what I'm, what I wanted to say is you do a deep dive. I've known you now, what, six years, seven years. And all I get are postcards of you at NASA. You're either on a helicopter somewhere, you're in some forensic lab, you're with these huge weapons, you're really involved in the space exploration, you're at some AI conference where you, you can't tell me where you are. Where did, like, obviously those elements are all throughout the new book. And we'll talk about that, which is, I think, one of the things that people are very excited about. But You've been doing that research for a very long time. Can you just tell us all more about what drives you in the sense of that interest in something, that passion that you have for, as you said, these new terrains, these, these uncharted territories? Well, you know, I think I never grew up. And the child <laughs> in me is insatiably curious, is full of wonder. And it reminds me of, I was probably about, maybe 10 or 11 years old living in the 200 member town of Montreat, North Carolina, outside of Asheville in the middle of nowhere. And but Billy Graham lived up the road. And so you never knew what might show up in your little town. And one day, good old 91, my orange bus pulled up to the my little stop and let me out at the bottom of the hill where I would walk up to go home. And there parked in the grass was a helicopter. And this was the 1960s. Oh, and it looked wow. like mash. And I'd never even seen one in the air, much less that close. It was like a UFO on the ground. And I walked around it looking at it and I was, I was awestruck. And, and of course, I never thought that someday I might own such a thing and fly it myself. But the point is, I want to walk into those places. I want to see what's there. I want to walk in the morgue. I want to walk in, you know, I want to walk into the crime scene. I would love to see our planet from above, like these people are doing who are launching these days. I can't imagine the wonder, because I felt it at NASA. They put me, were very kind and generous and put me through a lot of simulations at Johnson Space Center um, to get the feeling of what the astronauts, their unbelievable training and what little bit I got, the virtual reality of, of, of being on a spacewalk and it's all their video mm. that's knitted together. I mean, I was dizzy after it and, and I was, overwhelmed because I really felt that I was looking down on earth and I and it's I just don't know why anybody wouldn't want to have an adventure and look for all you artists out there if you're not curious about anything uh oh you better go to art therapy because the child in you is not happy <laughs> okay but so let's just talk about space because we're talking about NASA and about the your deep dive in the research um you you've included in a very a, a gripping um, thriller character piece, wonderful new character combinations, characters from past books who are now aligned. Um, but in the middle of it, there is a <laughs> an autopsy done in space. Now, the visual of that alone, you can only imagine. We, as the reader, are, are sort of trying to imagine where did that idea come that you were going to, that there was going to be a crime in space and that in order to determine what happened, Scarpetta was going to have to lead somebody who was, somebody was going to have to walk. Like many of us have seen, do you remember the Airplane movie? Yeah. Remember Airplane? Um, not this funny one. No, there was a scary one where something happened and the pilot died and somebody had to talk somebody through landing the airplane who had never landed an airplane. And I remember just that tension 
of having somebody in your ear saying, this is what you do, pull back on the thing, push the thing, blah, blah, blah. That's what it seems like in, in the new book. Can you just talk about that sequence? Because I think obviously people are thrilled by it. You know, wherever humans go, we will import our trials, our tribulations, our tragedies and our crimes. And, and so as we venture into space more, whether it's on, on, on space vehicles or in orbiting laboratories in, like the International Space Station and the commercial ones that are just around the corner, the scenario that I have an autopsy um, is absolutely plausible, including the kind of research that they're doing up there because there are things that you can do without gravity um, that we can't do down here, not, and so, or not easily. And so all of this that, that I show you, and I won't go into too much detail, but um, it, it's just being realistic. We're gonna have bad things happen up there. And what are we gonna do about it? And, and look, my stock and trade is worst case scenario. And that's what Dr. Scarpetta is around to fix. And she's also there to anticipate bad things that can happen. And on the Doomsday Commission, that's her new appointment um, in Washington now that she's the Chief Medical Examiner of Virginia again, she's also got this federal position. And that's one of her jobs is to help anticipate the terrible things. Like for example, if people are using high energy weapons like uh, the Havana syndrome we've been hearing about, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or if, if, if people are trying to take out our satellites in space, well, how does that affect Scarpetta? Well, there could be a lot of death and damage that come if you wipe out someone's infrastructure because you take out their satellites up there, or you have weaponized satellites up there that are aimed right at our nation's capital. Um, death and mayhem are her, are what she is her currency. So I'm thinking, what what are we going to do, and what would she do? And here's the fun part, you know, forensic science or forensic anything is simply about something that applies to legal cases. Um, so you could have forensic space forensics that's simply we've had it before when they take a material like a heat shield and they look at it with a scanning mm -hmm. electron microscope to figure mm -hmm. out why it failed that my dear is for as space forensics but you're going to have it up there and scarpetta shows you, well what do you do when someone bleeds there's no gravity it doesn't drip if imagine a bloody mess when there's no gravity to make blood drip and bodies don't fall over they right. float around they fly and around. do strange things that are very unattractive. <laughs> I know NASA will never want me to do anything because I'm supposed to tell you how wonderful it is all wonderful, but um, but, it, but it but it isn't all wonderful. It can't be because the world is too uncertain. And what you're talking about is the both sides of it, the mis the mystery of that science, the yep. magical aspect of space exploration, space force, et cetera. And at the same time, a very dark um, connection to it also. I think well, you know. I, space is like the most hopeful thing that we could ever be studying. I mean, because if we really get to the bottom of things, we will discover who we are and where we came from. Um, and whether, I, and, and I mean that seriously, because if, if I would be so depressed if I thought that we are all there is in this big grand universe, I would think someone could have done a little better than that especially these days when you look at the news, but it, it's also space is an unfriendly place. You know, yeah. we are used to gravity. We need air. We don't live in a vacuum unless you have a really bad relationship with somebody. And, um, and, and so what we got to know what those dangers are up there. You know, our military people who are in space force, our astronauts, everybody's got to know that, for example, if you're up there on an orbiting laboratory, or if you had a little visit on the space station, you better hope your fan is working in your crew quarters, because if the air isn't constantly moving, the carbon mm -hmm. dioxide that you exhale will just gather around your head in an invisible bubble and it will suffocate you in your sleep. And so that's why they have fans blowing one of the reasons um, and what something that wouldn't happen down here. And we don't think about it because it's invisible, just like viruses are in cyber attacks. So it's it's really as much as I want to thrill people and give them adventure, because that's the whole point too, but I also want to show you, hey, this is what things are like, learn about it, it's good for you. I know, but what's so amazing is you you have the ability, and somebody wrote in the chat that that was a spoiler alert, that there was an autopsy done in space. It, it, you know, I'm unfortunately- I don't know I, why, I, who did it? 
You don't well, know of course, I might have been extraterrestrials who did it. I'm not going to tell anybody <laughs> anything about like who did it, but these are really, first of all, you've been talking about the space um, uh, on television and obviously people are aware of it. Um, but what I also love is that the book does go into technologies and AI, you know, your, your Captain Chase series, the two quantum books, um, uh, well, Quantum and Spin, um, they both employed a lot of AI, a lot of these acronyms for these technologies that are something that's very real, and yet most of us just don't come in contact with it. And what I love about the book is that you go into that world. Lucy, of course, is someone who is heavily uh, invested through her own ingenuity in AI. And at the same time, there's just that gritty, um, you know, Alexandria, Virginia, Washington, DC mess. Mm -hmm. That mess of power, that mess of people trying to hold on to their power, people trying to cover up things. And what I love is that Scarpetta comes back for the uninitiated reader. She used to be the medical chief medical examiner and she left and now she's coming back. She is stepping back in, but it's not the same office. She doesn't have the same allies. And one of my favorite characters in the book is Maggie Cutbush who is her secretary, who is the assistant that she is given. And I just love that in the middle of all the space and the technology, which is something that you, Patricia, knowing you, following you, getting pictures of you in spacesuits from all over the world, at the sort of core of the book is just a really good investigative journalistic investigation with fantastic characters. So I just want to talk a little bit about what that, you know, why you chose to sort of put her in the sort of the den of not allies. It, it, it's such a wonderful world she enters. Can you just well, you talk know, a little bit about that? Some, a very wise actress who's very good at coming up with stories and how things work told me that you've got to have conflict isn't that right, Jamie Lee Curtis? Oh, maybe. She said, you know, um, I mean, we talked about, <laughs> but we were talking about this book before it was even done, you and I. And, and I mean, I listen and I learn. It's just like David Heyman, the Harry Potter producer said, you know, you got to have a great villain. And I said, well, what, how do you create a great villain? What's a great villain? He said, someone who, who thinks it's, you know, is a good person, but they're a villain. And, and you reminded me that conflict and that harkens back to post-mortem because when mm -hmm. she first arrived in Richmond 30 mm -hmm. years ago, she was the new girl in town, was an all boys network. She was there to clean up after the, the former chief who was a drunk and the, never showed up at crime scenes. So the cops weren't used to having the medical examiner weighing in. And that's how she met Marino in the beginning. And it was, mm, this was not good. So now you can't continue to have that conflict every single book, not the same kind. But as I returned all this to the beginning and relaunched it, I said, she's got to be up against something bad here. This cannot mm -hmm. be that she comes in on a white horse. Hello, the hero is back. Oh, no, they don't want her. The fiefdoms don't want her. The network doesn't want her. All those cases that have been buried and, and the, the conspiracies that have gone on, the power mongering, because this really does happen in the medical examiner world. Well, forensic pathologists will have politicians that will call them and say, you know, that really wasn't an erotic asphyxiation. You know, the guy was doing stuff. I mean, that I, I think he just killed himself. And I think all that leather bondage stuff kind of could disappear, couldn't it? And the answer is, oh, no, it can't. You mm -hmm, see what I mean? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. she comes back to Virginia and and her worst enemy is her own secretary maggie Cutbush, <laughs> who she's straight out of dickens like the evil one who wouldn't give oliver twist a little more may i have a little more please no you may not <laughs> so um so i wanted to do that and and keep it rooted in the terra firma which is the pandemic and the civil unrest in the january 6 and things boarded up and monuments being torn down in Richmond mm -hmm. and also, but, oh yes, you've got to have a serial killer in her neighborhood. 
to keep her busy because she can't just be working something in outer space. I mean, there's other things that go on too, but the root of what's going on is that she's got a body in her cooler, a woman found on the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. And of course, she's going to find out that it's linked to other stuff that nobody's paid attention to. And um, so it's, it's the old stuff, but I'm giving you new stuff while I'm at it. Well, and the old stuff includes old relationships. So what I love is that, and again, spoiler alert a little bit, Marino is back, but it, Marino is now in a relationship that Marino wasn't in um, five years ago. And yeah, when well, we left, well we, when we left Marino last, he and Dorothy, Scarpetta's sister, were sort of being a little flirty with each other. But they were being flirty, but they but, weren't in a relationship. No, they weren't like that, not like in this book. And, and right. um, I, I don't know what all you readers out there are going to say about why Marino ended up marrying Dorothy. Do you think it's because he couldn't get Scarpetta? I didn't say it. Um, I didn't and, say oh, that. what's that going to mean? What's that going to mean going forward? I don't know. I don't know anything. I just I just take notes. Uh, oh, that's such a good quote. I'm going to write that one down. Um, I just I do love that you have chosen through your channeling of Scarpetta to put her and Marino and Dorothy and Lucy all in very close proximity to each other, close proximity that creates tension, whatever kind of tension. And, but it also creates poignancy too. Poignancy and the root, the grounding of any good story, which is the human contact between people and characters, and danger. Because of course, there is danger. There's always danger when you're a challenging person like Scarpetta. And there is, again, spoiler alert, the, the the book deals with poisoning. It deals with um, synthetic opiates and these opioids that are very common nowadays. And we're hearing more and more about these synthetics, these these and how they are distributed and dispensed. And there's a lot of that in the book. And it's, it also kind of calls into question the relationships because of course, you know, if one of your main characters is poisoned or gets very close to being killed, it throws all of those relationships back in. And I just think you did a masterful job of weaving all of that. And I, I, I is it something that you have been following all of that? I mean, obviously the opioid uh, problem around the country, around the world, but um, is is a big problem. I do keep up with the things that are going on out there. Uh, that, and, and I know the types of things that are killing people, you know, when they think they're, they're getting uh, some sort of um, opioid that they don't realize that there's fentanyl in it or worse than that. The, the you know derivatives variants of fentanyl that are, mm -hmm. are, are that are so much more powerful and deadly. There's so many things that to be worried and to be careful about, and so yes, I, I do keep up with these things. And you know, one of the things that's helpful is that so many people who work in these real professions, like the Secret Service or NASA um, or medical examiners or some other types of scientists, are my friends. And mm -hmm. you know, and as you know, with our own relationship through osmosis. You learn a lot just from kind of sharing the airspace with somebody and yeah. and and so that's what you know so i pick up these things and of course stacy works in a field where i hear a lot of this kind of stuff my yes. partner um and i mean she's a scientist also so that that makes a, a a very big difference but you make a real important point and i think the readers who are familiar with scarpetta will be very appreciative of it's very cloistered in this book Benton and Scarpetta have have um, bought an 18th century property in Old Town, right, right, overlooking the Potomac, and it's a rundown thing. Needs a lot of work, but it's in the area where George Washington once was a surveyor. I mean, old, old part of the world. Lucy lives in the guest house on their property, and she, you'll see better why she sequesters herself and what she's doing inside that little cottage all day long. Then you've got Marino and Dorothy who are right around the corner 
in a condo on the river where he's got a motorboat and his motorcycle and all the other fancy things that Dorothy buys for him that kind of gets under his, his skin occasionally now and then. But so they're right there. Everybody's together and getting along and they're all scared about the same thing is, you know, the first, this murder, um, mm -hmm. the lady in the refrigerator is way too close to home when they begin to realize exactly where the crime scene was. Um, so it, in that regard, it's, it's back to the days of kind of being a small town thing. So I want to let a bunch of people ask questions because they're so good, but I just want to bring up one other thing that <clears throat> if you remember from the first time I read it in galley uh, form, there's a moment where people are trying to sabotage Scarpetta in her new job. You know, she comes in to sort of do her work. And of course, the people within that office are trying to scuttle her by, you know, not leaving her examination kits intact, taking stuff. And there's a moment. What I love is that this book has space and AI and wonderful characters. And then at the same time, she has to make her own luminol. Mm -hmm. Like she actually has to create her own uh, you know, um, um, equipment to do the job. And I just love that weird, like it's literally like D Y I C S I. Well, <laughs> it's like it's, it, you know, everything is about rhythm and, and, and contrast. You think of music and you, know, you have a crescendo and then it's followed by a pastoral or something quiet. And, 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 and so, you know, when you're going to overwhelm people with, all, with, 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 there's a dream chaser space plane flying through the ether, heading to this, mm -hmm. dis, this disaster site of this imperiled orbiter and astronauts going in and all that stuff. Then what you really want to have is that Scarpetta, she's got a, she got a hunch that she wants to go look for something and it and and luminol gives a false positive for this particular thing so you could use it to find it because it will light up in, mm -hmm. after dark so she goes in her closet right there in the office with that old nasty maggie's watching and she's rummaging where's the blue star the reagent that i use for this it's all mixed it's perfect it's easy and it's much more convenient and oh it's gone Oh yes, yeah, so and so came in and needed to borrow it and didn't replace it. So she's got to go get this and get that and put it all in her little <laughs> kit and go off to the railroad tracks in the middle of the night with Marino and she's mixing this, shaking it up, spray, spray, spray. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I there's there's a wonderful D Y I part of it that I also think grounds this. It's it's as much as there's this other stuff of tech and AI and space. There's also this really human, it's almost like you or me could go and mix this stuff. You could. And well, I, I and well, you could. I'm not going well, to. You know, so part of the thing I want to show people is that you can do these things. It, it this is you can. You will be amazed at what you can do if you try. I mean, I have no sense of direction, and yet I learned how to fly a helicopter. I, you know, and I, st I still get lost everywhere I go. I there I got lost on my my first solo for that matter. You, but you just carry on and you keep doing what you do. Be more resourceful and people like space. You don't have to be a, a, a physicist to understand some of the things that are going on out there. All you got to do is be interested and you should be interested in things that are interested back. And all of these things are interested in us too. It's what makes us who we are. Okay, I'm going to start getting into questions. Um, Lisa Grimes wants to know, have you ever tried using a VR headset like Oculus? I have tried. Hello, Lisa. I know who you are and it's nice of you to be here. Um, when I was doing the, the training at the, the, the research at NASA at uh, Johnson Space Center, one of the things they would do is put the VR goggles and stuff on me and you would be in this room and they put a tool in your hand and other things like you're on the space station and you've got the virtual reality and you're supposed to like move a cushion or something out of the way and there's no gravity so it goes sailing when you and, and it's really weird because it looks like you're doing this stuff so yes and, and remember for those people who go into space you never go into space until you go into space so all the training they do is virtual really or it's in their mm -hmm. virtual buoyancy swimming pool with the space station under the water the mock-up and um, the, the scuba stuff and all these things they do, but a lot of most of this is virtual and the, the their virtual reality. 
I mean, if you could get the overview effect from virtual reality, I think I did from doing that spacewalk. But most of all, from all my years of research, I have what's called the underview effect. <laughs> okay, you're hilarious. Um, this is a real question from Jane Taff, which is how do you keep track, and such a good question, how do you keep track of all your characters' developments? Do you work when you're writing? Do you use cards? How do you keep track of it because there are a lot of people each one has their own huge life because that's what makes them such great characters i do i have an artificial intelligence research assistant named christine who's really not artificial and she is retired from nasa and she is a, a medal winning nasa scientist and she has the whole database of all the scarpetta stuff and i say christine um, what color eyes did that person have who died and what did they die of? Because I was like, I don't even know how many books ago. Cause, and now I get, I, do, 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 I get the report back. And I, I kid you not that that is what I do. And, and um, because I can't keep track of all this stuff and you can't get it wrong. Well, yeah, big time you can't get it wrong. Um, so interesting. Okay. Um, Amy Splain would like to know, of all the cases the K has been assigned to, this is going to be a really good question, which one is she the most proud of? So out of all of the, I know, right? You know what? I would think that right now she would be very proud of what she just did in space with that case um, because for two reasons. One, she has to acquiesce her power and control to other people so they can be her hands up there and that's a hard thing to do to have somebody else pick up a scalpel and and or or forceps or whatever as someone who's not even a doctor and for her to be able to do that and do it as gracefully and graciously as she did i thought was remarkable and i say that as if i had nothing to do with it but i'm kind of sitting there watching it the second thing is she'd be very proud of the fact that she never gives up on a detail, you know, something that someone else doesn't think is important, like the funny little piece of plastic that somebody found up there. She's not going to rest till she makes sure she knows what that is, um, because that's going to tell a very big story about what really happened up there. And so I think, but she, you know, but that's a good question. But right now, I'd say she feels really good about that because she made it work without being there in person. And I, I, that's a real feat, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michelle Farnum would like to know what is your connection between Italian food and Scarpetta cooking delicious meals in your books? Gluttony, gluttony. You know, my connection is just that I love. I've always loved good Italian food, and when I first quote created Scarpetta, or more likely discovered her back in the nineteen eighties, when she sort of popped into my head, the, the name Scarpetta, my my. Charlie, who was my husband back then, he was always telling these funny stories about his landlady at University of Virginia, whose last name was Scarpetta. I'd never heard that name before. I said, wow, what a name. So I'm going to take that name, but what ethnicity do we make this? And I said, well, I'm going to make her Italian because I like to make pizza and I like to cook spaghetti. And also, but really the other thing is I wanted to make her Italian because to, to use an old phrase, there's a fearful symmetry between the Italian culture and what you see when you go in the morgue, which is colorless and sh sharp around the edges and cold, and the sounds of steel clinking against steel and water drumming in a sink, and it's not. When she goes home, she wants to hear music, smell flowers in her garden, and make something wonderful to eat with her own hands and have her friends sit there. That's what she wants to do. Um, Sally Erickson would like to know, this is so, by the way, this is what I love about Zoom. And we've all done them. And <laughs> it's been now coming up two years in March that we will all have started. I had never done FaceTime with my kids before. I had, people would say, let's FaceTime. I'd be like, I don't FaceTime on my phone. And now we're all, so someone has observed something in your Zoom. And she, it's Sally Erickson, and she would like to know, there's a model behind you in the bookcase, an Apollo with a lunar landing module. Is there a history behind that? I have a couple models in here that are autographed by Buzz Aldrin. 
and I had the distinct Ooh. pleasure. He doesn't know me, but many years ago, I was at a congressional hearing in Washington, and I was sitting in this front row um, all by myself, and he comes walking in, and he comes and plops down right next to me with his red, his, his flag socks on and his pins and his little, you know, footprint on the moon pin, and he comes right up next to me, and it was like, I could not believe this, and I thought, I, there was something so amazing about sitting next to someone who's walked on the moon. And, um, you know, so I, he sells his stuff online. I, I, I didn't get anything special here. I got, a, I bought a couple of them. I wanted to have them. And I also have a model of the space shuttle that my NASA researcher friend gave me. I have a model of the dream chaser space plane, which is in autopsy. It's a real thing. Um, you're going to see those things zipping around up there pretty soon they're they're mostly for carrying cargo right now but they can carry crew they probably will uh, so all so yes i do have some fun things back there yes it's fun it's we've all done it by the way that's a picture of me and the dalai lama uh when i went to a conversation with the dalai lama and houston smith at ucla and that's my little girl annie behind me and me meeting the dalai lama for a second backstage and it was wow. a thrilling moment and I have other items, but you're not going to get to know what they are. Well, I um, don't have the, the, no, I don't have the Dalai Lama. That that would be, that'd be almost right. like having God sign something. Well, I'm. I, he didn't sign it. He just looked at me and was lovely. Um, uh, I know we're getting. It's now we're we're good, and I we will get to TV, everybody. So just hold your horses. Um, I'm going to ask this question, which will lead us into TV. Do, um, Don Schumacher, Shoemaker. Um, do you think Dr. Scarpetta will encounter another serial killer that will go across multiple books, similar to the way she encountered Temple Brooks Galt and Carrie Grantham? I don't know, but it could happen. I don't know. I don't, you know, right now I know about as much as you do about what she's going to encounter next in terms of another serial killer. But, you know, the problem, sometimes it's hard to have that in, in, the sort of things that I set, because I set what's really more like what happens in the real world, as, and it's usually not a villain that goes on and on and on, but there could be a day, you're giving me an idea, you shouldn't do this. I mean, I could see where she could have like a Green River Strangler type thing, you know, something that's been mm -hmm. going on for years. Oh, I kind of like this idea. And that it's in the background, just playing there. And goes on and on and every now and then it raises its head but it's not going to get solved but it's not the main thing so maybe the answer maybe i get a lot of good ideas from you guys you know you got really mad when i killed off benton wesley i didn't really do it i wasn't even there when it happened but that's why he came back so i do listen um okay so obviously uh, quite a few people have asked about seeing scarpet on the screen and here's what I can tell you as the producer of the TV series, Scarpetta. Um, it, it, it took us a long time to get there. Um, many people have been trying to bring Scarpetta to the, scene, to the screen. And I feel very fortunate, uh, daunted uh, in, in the undertaking to bring Scarpetta to uh, a television streaming screen uh, for you all, the fans in the near future. I can't really tell you much about it, the process, except that we do have a writer who is busy right now sort of contextualizing how we're going to take 25 books and how we're going to enter the storytelling. So I, it is happening. We are right now in the middle of that creative process. It's a process, as Patricia knows, as a writer, where you have to let the writer do their thing. You, you, it's not something where a lot of people can be giving input. Once it starts to get a framework, then of course, all of us, Patricia, myself, and the great team at Blumhouse will put our um, thoughts into it and our contributions. But we are very excited. And, um, and I've had a bunch of people here say that I should play her. And that's very kind of you. I will not be playing Scarpetta. I will be producing Scarpetta along with my friend Patricia, and um, she will be working her ass off, whoever it is, and I will not, as I am here in California, 
with my lovely husband, who is also a big fan of Patricia, and we are a friend group with Patricia and Stacy. I'm going to let a couple more people. Well, you're going to um, have to play something. You're going to have to. Play oh, something. just hold on. I'll everybody. write a role for you, whatever you want. I know you, you will. Something. Um, do you have a special place that you write that inspires you? Well, I I just have offices like you're looking at my writing office in Boston right now, and and I, uh, this is where I sit. Except that normally my chair's on the other side of the desk, so I'm looking that way instead mm -hmm. of looking here. But I wanted you to you know almost look like hey maybe a real writer works there. So wherever I my residence is, is I'm going to have an office, and it's my quiet place. This is you know I come in here and I shut the door, and it's soundproofed, um, so I don't hear noise because I can't stand distractions. And I always compare it to, I say it's like Alice going through the looking glass. You gotta go to that place so that I'm not really sitting here trying to think about what they're doing. I'm mm -hmm. trying to watch what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get it right, I keep going back to where it was working. And then I follow her down the corridor again and she stops and talks to that person. But this time she says something that works better. And I go, oh, so. That is what I do, and I live with it. When I'm awake at night, I think about it. Um, I'm never really away from it any more than I'm yeah. away from a relationship with somebody I care about. It's always there. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it. I can't imagine, given how long you've been in a relationship with Scarpetta, that she's very far from your thoughts because it feels so integrated into you, uh, you to her her to you. It's a beautiful partnership between the two of you. And I think we're all feeling the benefit of it. I have two last questions for you. First one uh, is from Carol Wagoner. I want to help my daughter develop a love of reading. What is your favorite young adult book or adult book series? Is there a, you know? Well, first of all, if if you're if somebody doesn't like reading um and then i would i would say it depends on how old the person is because if the if this person were old enough to read like something like autopsy i write my books for people that really don't like to read because i've always had a hard time reading fiction mm -hmm. i admit it and i love nonfiction, and um and so i try to write for those who like me may not get lost in something that they don't they just can't they, they have they don't they don't believe it's real um but i you know i know that um i don't know if, if about fantasy but i do know that fantasy and, and science fiction can be a lot of fun too i mean a lot of kids read harry potter who weren't going to read so i don't but i'm not the best expert on that i'm sorry to say if all i can say is tell them to read me that shows you i don't know very much well, I, I can tell you from the fact that I have raised two that both Who knows the answer to that. Well, no, I can tell you that the Harry Potter book series, I think, changed a generation, certainly a generation or two. It's your children's because books. That's, that's yeah, no, 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 no. Those are for little guys. I'm talking about young. She, I think she's talking about like young readers, young adult readers, people who are trying to find the love of reading. And I will tell you, my daughter, my elder daughter, Annie, is 35 years old and every single year she rereads Harry Potter. <laughs> they speak to her, they were, they were a portal from her imagination and the, you know, the same mm -hmm. thing that makes your book so great the character intertwining, the sort of overall bigger picture story, and the central character or central characters, which your books have too, yours are for a slightly more old, you know, an older group. Um, um, you know, I, I, I just from my own experience, I can tell you that to see my 35 year old daughter still enjoying a Harry Potter book um, makes, yep you know, makes someone like me, me, weirdly enough, I, when I was 12, I read James Clavell, all of his historical fiction, King Rat, Shogun, like I loved historical fiction just for the uninitiated. I do love a good historical fiction. I love history. And then I love the melding of then a good narrative into it. So 
Uh, I found that James Clavell books were really quite, I read King Rat, which is set in a prison or a war camp when I was 12, when I was on vacation with my father and his new family and I was sort of isolated <laughs> and we were in this house and there was a, in fact, look at this, weirdly enough, I still have the copy of King Rat well, I, that was I, on the shelf well, in. I have, well, I have I have the box I have the boxcar children. See, okay, that's, that was one us. of the things I read when I was little because I thought that was so cool. And I mean, I love the idea of children with no no parents and they're on their own and living in a little boxcar and they go out and scavenge things and they you know it's really terribly sad and tragic and awful. But but I used to read those and I just happened to have one handy. Yes. Well, reading is, I think, for both of us, just a huge, it is a huge um, uh, love uh, for me. It is, it is one of my favorite things to do, is to read. And um, I, I know you also. So here's the last question. Well, let me just say one, one thing about that, though. What? I'm sorry. I know I'm off script. Um, for those who there don't is like no to script. read, I know I'm being funny, I'm trying to be. Uh, for those who don't really like to read, I think the thing to encourage is to remind them it's 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 not an exercise. Reading is an interactive exercise. It is like playing tennis. You mm -hmm. pick up the book, you start reading, and then you participate and you hit the ball back, and it's going like this and like this. And once, if you can get somebody into it, they will never forget how much they love it because it you are creating something at the same mm -hmm. time you're reading it. I didn't create mm -hmm. all this book. You're creating it too when you read it. Mm -hmm. So to that point, uh, one of our listeners or partners here, Eric, you'll vote, 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 V-A-U-D-T, help me people, um, said, of all things, I read Agatha Christie as a teenager. And I think that's a great suggestion because love those Christie. those books are also incredibly um, well woven with character and story. So here's the last question: as we as we so perfectly timed our, I could as you know talk to you for many hours, and I will <laughs> when this finishes. Um, what's left on your bucket list? Um, this is from Jessica Osborne. And it's a wonderful question because you, you do a lot that many of us will never do because, and then you write about it and we're all like, ah, okay. so what's left for you? All right. If I'm going to be really brutally honest, I'll tell you what I, I, I would love someday to happen, but I don't expect it to happen because I think there are other people who it'd be better for them than, than you don't need me to do. I'd like to go up in a rocket. I'd like to see earth from space. I would love to go up there and see it for myself. Um, I can't imagine. I, when William Shatner came down from doing that and was crying, it mm -hmm. made me cry too. And I know, I, and I just thought, I would love to do that. But you know what? The nice thing is I've come so close to doing it anyway through all my simulated everything that it may be better that other people get that treat and not me. But that would be on my bucket list just to get to see that. I mean, I've always had this dream of being able to fly around the moon and look down on it. And I'm sure I won't do that. I'm, I won't live long enough probably for the moon. Um, but but you never know. I mean, I'd like Scarpetta to work something on the moon someday and don't think I won't do that. Might do it remotely, but mm, there's going to be some interesting things that happen up there. Well, here's what I want to say. Because I control the universe for another minute or so. I would like to say this. For all of the fans who are here on the Zoom, I think we just start a campaign <laughs> on Twitter to get Patricia Cornwell into space. Do I get and a I think a, it's, a round trip or are you just going to blast me off? <clears throat> no, see, we may. <laughs> okay, Lisa Grimes, how the show does. Lisa Grimes has already said she will start the campaign. Oh, I, thank you. Lisa. You know what? That's how this happens, is that people do. You know, I will... Uh, send a, a message out to Jeff Bezos out there in the world. And I'll say, Mr. Bezos, send Ms. Cornwell to space, please. If you're going to send someone, send our friend Patricia, because I, we would all like to hear from her. Yes, I will Patricia. promise you this. 
if I ever get to go where few people have gone before and to see things for myself, I promise I will share them with everybody and Scarpetta will will. share them and we will write an awesome scene and you guys will all have lots of fun talking about it. Hey, and just real quick, in case you don't know, the the books that you're buying today are signed. And there aren't yes. many that I sign, and some of them even have a little doodle in them. So just remember those, if you want them for holiday presents, because those are the only books that I'll, I will be yes. signing. Yes, so th- out there. that was part of my job, and I failed miserably. No. My part of my job was to say that this book copies that are available are signed, and it is the holiday coming up, and they make darn good holiday gifts. I do want and, to remind you of something you said to me, just I want to end on this, even though I'm not in charge right now, Jamie, that long ago when you were on stage with me for Depraved Heart, you looked at me in front of everybody and you said, how come there's nothing on TV or film? Why don't you try, you're going to have to try Craigslist to find somebody. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have said that because now, see, see, see. <laughs> I know. It's all good. Everybody, God bless you. Stay safe out there. Uh, wear your masking, wash your hands, keep distant, try to still have some fun. Um, life is for living. And um, yes, the additional copies are signed as well. Kelly Forrester um, and Eric has a funny copy of uh, Ripper with a doodle that you did. Oh, good. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Uh, Carrie Medina said... I started reading your books because of my mom, and now your new book is her Christmas gift. Oh, that's sweet. Merry Thank Christmas, you. everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you, everybody. Be safe. Be safe. And this was super fun, and I love you so much, Patricia. And I love, I love you, Stacey. and I love everybody. Thank you. So uh, God bless you all. Stay safe. And this was super fun. Bye. Thank you.